ideas, right? So let, let, there's a message that's turned up, and it has all the bits. Um, it, if you look in the log file, you'll find it doesn't actually contain the, the prying in any clear way, but it's got the timestamp, it's got where it came from, and there's hello world. That was it. Cool. So, so now, uh, back over here, uh, we're going to have a look at, and we've done that whole thing, so now we're going to have a look at the syslog library doing the same thing. So, here's the code. Um, it's a sender. A sender becomes equal to a sender, sending to a host name, blah, 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 blah. Um, it creates a user level notice, which is one of the priority things. It says, it says where it's coming from. Now, the, the idea is that you're supposed to say what your program is here, program name. And then that's just convention, you don't have to. And then you put in the rest of the message there, which of course could be anything. You can encode things in text and put in what you like. Um, but we're going to do that. And then we send a message and we ensure that the sender closes. So now we're going to do that. Right, and it, this time, well, here it is. We're in the, So back up to here. Right, now we say bar messages. And there's nothing there. Nothing there, you see, but I'm not surprised, am I? So, so what's going on? Um, are you listening? The answer is no. By far the majority of these syslog servers running on machines just don't listen. Right? They ignore all the UDP stuff. You look in the RFC and it says it's listening on UDP, blah 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 blah, but in practice none of them actually do that. Okay, they're all off. So that really is a bummer if you're trying to develop this stuff. And you're like me, I always assume my code's wrong rather than anything else. And so spent bloody ages working on that, trying to figure out what's wrong. And essentially it's just this, this stuff down here, you've got to go and set this thing to art. So right, let's go and do that. And then it's going to start to work. And I'm showing you these things because these things, these are the things that will get in your way. Right? So you see, see it's done, see it's relatively easy. So we're going to fix that up. I won't keep zooming in now. So there, there's even a comment in here that says you've got to put that R in. So you just go in here and say minus R. And uh, what we need to do now is just restart the, the logger. Start it. Now, um, we'll do a quick bar of messages. Right, it's basically said I just come back up. And we can go again here, do our thing again, right there. That's good. Oh, relax. Don't you hate demo? And I think I might have to slip into, well, of course it should work this way, but it's not there. That will also, and actually this is another thing about UDP, right? I'll, I'll come to this in a minute, but it's not guaranteed delivery. So you can just blast this message out there, it doesn't matter if there's nobody listening, it's still sent, it doesn't really care. So, okay. Ah, I can't do that, right. So there we go, down at the bottom there you can see a uh, test message from small talk. That's wildly exciting, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant with excitement here. Okay. So, but this is kind of pretty good because it means you can send these log messages now to any commercial syslog server. So, in Open Skills case, we're running a lot of um, uh, gemstone gems that are running as our HTTP server. Right? They're all receiving requests and different things are happening. And they're all um, under attack all the time. We're seeing all of these kind of really bogus requests and things. And all of these things are being logged down onto individual machines, log files. So if we want to know what's going on from a systemic point of view, from the whole of our systems, we've got to go through and basically do barlog messages on all these various things. But now, with this, we can have all the messages from our gemstone being sent to one place and all get logged in one place. So that's really pretty cool. So, and you can use this as well, of course, on um, five images as well, if you want to know exactly what people are up to. You know. 
you are being lied into civil, but something like that, you can do that kind of thing too. You can never do that kind of thing. Right. Now, we mentioned the UDP thing. Uh, one of the things about UDP is, is exactly what the problem is. That is, it won't hang if there's no receiver there. The beauty of this is your system is running. This logging is basically bonus information, stuff you want to know. But if you can't get through, it's not going to kill you. It's not like financial information you've got to say, or sort of life critical life information. What you're saying is, this is the state of the system right now, I've been taxed, or whatever is going on. So typically you want to use this information for trending, or something like that. So you can see here, you can't even see the bloody green line, can you? Right, there's a green line at the top, <laughs> right, which is the throughput using UDP, and a red line showing the throughput using TCP. TCP has got a lot of overheads to ensure that things actually get to where they're supposed to go. UDP does not. So, and that's by the chap called Jim Snow, he actually did a lot of um, monitoring stuff like that. So, between these two, speed versus reliability, and you, you can use, there is a, a, another RFC that extends the syslog thing to say, this is how you can log through TCP, and some of the servers actually accept TCP as well, so, you know, you can get it to work. Um, but if you can't afford to lose a message, don't, you know, don't send it through UDP, and also, Maybe you should ask yourself if what you're doing is really logging. Are you, are you doing something else, like keeping an audit trail, where you've actually got to know what happened when and where? Look, this is kind of logging isn't necessarily the right vehicle for that. Moving right along. The receiver. Okay. So, uh, the receiver listens, of course, on 514. But, of course, because this is a port number which is less than 1024, you, as mere mortals, can't use it. Okay. Only root allowed to listen on the ports which are below one or two So you have a choice. You can either um, run the image as root, or you can use your firewall to redirect ports. I think on Windows you can open the lower ports. Of course on Windows. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about operating systems. shut down the other guy, we would have got an exception because we would have got a complaint to come from a, 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 a port, a port because it's already in use. So now, uh, I've got to remember what I did for the rest of the thing, so I'm just going to start this guy. Okay. Okay. Right, now, Now, 
Okay, this is a syslog config file. Um, it looks horrendous, but really, all that's going on in here is that we are um, saying, for this kind of log message, send it here, so you can see bar log, bar log, bar log. all the targets, all files. Okay. If we go down the file, we get to a line that I've added at the end, and that is, for everything that gets down this far, send it off to that address. Let's find out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what it's going to go is up to this virtual machine down here. So we're sending it, we're sending it to 144. Check. See, we've got a couple of messages up there that weren't there before. Right. So these, these two. <laughs> Come on, you can see them. <laughs> there they are. Yep. Yep. Except now. now they're actually displayed as they would be in RFC. Right. So it's looking like angle brackets and all this kind of bits and bobs. So there we are. We actually got a message going through. And if we want, we can then do a, a breakpoint and see it happening and so that. So that's fine. What we can also do now is send a message through. Hang on, I'm getting ahead of myself, probably. Collector, right. So, you see that? Blah, 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 blah. Collector, right, okay. So, collector is a special kind of receiver. So, the idea is that it's not just receiving these things and dropping them on the ground, as I am. The collector is <coughs> going to do something useful with them. So, it's going to keep them somewhere. And the, the typical way that they get kept on the, on the Linux system is, or Unix system is they get written to files, like file of messages. We've seen how all that happens. Okay? You can summarize them, that is, you can just count them as they come through, and occasionally write a message off the bar of messages, like in the, in the last second of 2000 attempts to crack in via SSH. And, and, and we, get, we get that kind of load on some of the open skilled systems with people running bots and things like that when we get in. So that's summarizing is useful, or you know, just drop them. Now, uh, one of the things I'm interested in doing is get, in developing a collector. I mean, it's only relatively easy to do, and that is, it, it's going to write them to a relational database. So it's going to signal Postgres, which means then I can do some analysis and see exactly what's going on with all these different kinds of attacks. Okay, so we'll give that another time. And whatever else I think of, really, that's uh, the thing. Right. Now, a relay is a combination of a receiver and a sender. So you may want to sort of have a network or, you know, you can imagine you've got a whole swarm of these things out there collating and spreading information around and moving it to the right place and finally dropping it on the disk. So, um, again, those from redirect messages. So, for example, if you wanted to send it to a different port, you want to lift all of your main um, small talk syslog servers up above that problem port, you can just lift them all up and then you can talk over a different port. Completely cheating, but you can do that. <laughs> um, so, and, it, and perhaps even send certain uh, things off to alert pages and all this kind of stuff. So, once it's in small talk, of course, the world is the mollusk of your choice. You can do anything you like. Um, so that's really it, but I wanted to show you one other thing. Um, I don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. Um, we're going to go back to the other guy. Here. Right. And we're going to send a message this time to 30. That's how I got left to 30. So we're going to send a message to this, this chat now. <coughs> and with any luck, what we'll see is the message turn up in. There. All right, that didn't work. That was the last thing. So what I was trying to do basically was because I'd. I wonder if I told it that it's not so accepted. Oh, it doesn't matter. So, the, the, sorry, sorry. Yes, it was. But what I was trying to do, if you remember, there was one of the IPs which I modified the address of to send syslog requests back to this machine here where I collected them. 
So the idea is that there are three machines sitting there doing different things. Did you set this one with the minus R option and this is one D? Probably not. That's what I probably haven't done. But, you know, that's, yeah, we can do that for the time. Um, because I, I like to finish my talks on time. <laughs> um, so, so there we are. Let's go back and have a look at that summary. No, no, no. Can't, can't. It's not there yet. <laughs> we, have, we have to do the summary. Right? So, um, one of the benefits of using Syslog is that there are just heaps of tools out there for doing stuff with it. You can, if you've got a massive load of these messages whizzing around the place, you can buy commercial products that will do an analysis and reporting and graphs and charts and this kind of stuff. Um, so, it's, because it's a standard, it makes it very flexible. Uh, best effort delivery with UDP, but it absolutely definitely has to be there, right? Use TCP. And, and Syslog is the only way to fly for your extra image login, which brings me on to things like Toothpick and uh, the logging system that we have here. So, um, and needless to say, Ms. Joseph harangued me earlier on, saying, you know, had I incorporated it with Toothpick? And I said, no, I haven't. <laughs> I'm doing it two hours initially, and I've, I've just developed this, really. But I'm sure we can get it going in Toothpick very easily. But the point is, you can put it into those kinds of logging systems, either as a source or a sync. So, um, Toothpick is a way of actually uh, being able to create log messages from within small talk. You might create logs on uh, exceptions or all kinds of, all kinds of other activity going on in your image. And with a syslog connection, you can then squirt all these out and centrally gather them and do all that kind of thing. Okay. And that's it. Your pain is over. Any questions? No? Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you very much indeed.